middle managers are starting to sweat because people are starting to catch on that they might not be needed. Fed up managers declare work from home is over as 77% say they'd fire you or cut your pay for not coming back to the office. Meanwhile, the employees they're threatening are just laughing in their faces. Uh, have you heard of this thing called the Great Resignation? Uh, you realize how quickly I could get another job? Go ahead and fire me, bitch. I could have another job next week. We'll see how you deliver this million-dollar project without me, though. I look forward to seeing these managers get burnt. Working from home, it was fun while it lasted. Oh, it's still lasting. Don't worry about it. About three out of five managers believe that remote work is on the wane and workers will be back in the office full time by the end of this year. The companies that uh, partake in that, let's just say they're probably going to be out of business and they're apparently prepared to use some tough tactics to get workers back at their desks. Yeah, yeah, that's right. During the great resignation where uh, employees across all industries are fed up and leaving their jobs, where employers have to keep conceding more and more and actually treating their employees like people instead of resources, you're going to pull this? Go ahead. This will be a good way to make sure that you go out of business. About 77% of managers said they'd be willing to implement severe consequences, including firing workers or cutting pay and benefits for those who refuse to return to the office. According to a recent survey by employment background check company, good hire of 3,500 American managers. They say this until they realize they don't have as much power as they think they do. And it, it really depends on the employee. It's very easy to fire someone that that doesn't have any um a, any skills that require like months of training. Yeah, unskilled labor is one story, but guess what? Unskilled labor isn't the type of labor that's working from home right now. The type of jobs where everyone's working remote, those are the skilled jobs that require months, sometimes years worth of training to be able to do. I'm not even just talking about starting, right? Like say, I'm a code monkey and we had a new guy start up a few weeks ago. It takes him like a week to do what I could get done in like three hours. But that's because of the experience, right? I've been at this company for years. I know the software inside and out. Anytime anything goes wrong or something needs an improvement, I know exactly where to go and what to do. Chances are I wrote the original code anyway. I know exactly how it works. It's going to take this guy a few years to get to the same level I'm at now. After he has a few years of experience like I do, he's going to be at that level too. Now, imagine if these idiot managers had a workplace kind of like mine, where you got like maybe three people that are veterans and can do things quickly. They know the product inside and out. And what if they lost all three of them? Like, oh, who, who cares? We'll just hire someone new. It's going to take those new guys like twice as long to get to that level without anyone showing them the ropes. I look forward to seeing a lot of companies Minecraft themselves by doing this because you know it's going to happen. Although many surveys have shown that the majority of workers prefer remote and hybrid work structures, most managers still believe in-person work is best. And it's all about self-preservation because these managers know that uh, the higher ups, the upper managers are starting to figure out, like, maybe we only need about 10% uh, of the middle managers we have. And that's what they're scared of. They're trying to justify their own continued employment. Former Google CEO and chairman Eric Schmidt even recently weighed in about the return to work debate, saying that it's important for people to be at the office and he's happy the remote era seems to be ending. Uh, boomer mentality, basically. I don't know uh, how you build great management with remote work. I honestly don't, he said. And at half of managers, 51% genuinely believe their workers want to return to the office. <laughs> they are so out of touch. It's not even funny. But right now, there's no going back. Natural selection is going to take care of everyone who refuses to, to adapt at this point. 
Clearly, managers are struggling, said Max Westman, good house chief operating officer. Organizations that find a work arrangement that satisfies the majority of their workforce will benefit in the areas of recruitment, productivity, employee satisfaction, and retention. Yeah, we're going to see a massive exodus. Like employees are going to leave these boomer ran workplaces that force them to go back to the office and they'll find their ways into the newer ones that let them work remote. Because, you no, know, right now, as a code monkey, Working remote is non-negotiable for me. The only time I would even consider going back to an, an office environment is if I was desperate. Now, if I desperately needed the money and that was my only option, I would do it. But unless I am at the end of my rope, working from home is non-negotiable. If you expect me to come into the office, then uh, I'm, I'm quitting. Like I'm, I'm not going to be here. And workers may have more say in their job structure amid the labor shortage. Yup. What was I saying at the beginning? These managers, another reason they're struggling is because they can't come to terms with the fact that they no longer have as much power as they used to. It used to be where the manager could get you to do whatever the hell they wanted. And uh, if, if you showed even the slightest resistance, they'd fire you. Now, the workers are the ones that have most of the power because the managers know, uh, oh shit, if I fire this guy, it might, it might be years before I could properly replace him. Meanwhile, he'll be in a new job next week, probably making more money than I pay him. And when companies announce return to office plans, workers don't have a lot of choice but to comply. They can quit. Unless a worker was specifically hired for a remote position, they're probably required to work out of the office at least part of the time. Some workers, particularly those with health issues, including an immunocompromised system, chronic kidney disease, serious heart conditions, diabetes, and obesity. Oh, God. So, so basically, three-quarters of the American population who may be more vulnerable to the corona chain uh, may be able to get remote work accommodations under the Americans with Disabilities Act and state regulations, but that typically requires a formal review process. It's worth noting that only about 10% of employed Americans worked remotely in March because of Corona Chan, according to data from the Bureau of Labor Statistics. Over half of workers reported being already required to return to in-person full-time, according to uh, WorkHuman's April Human Workplace Index, a monthly survey of 1,000 full-time U.S. workers. And they did, as opposed to finding a new job? Uh, although, okay, to be fair, maybe they're just still looking. Yeah, because like I, I try to tell you guys, too, try not to rage quit your job. If you're going to quit, don't just outright quit. Start looking for a new job. I bet most, if not all of these workers that went back to the office, they're right now on the job hunt for another remote job. And as soon as they get one, they're going to be gone. Uh, but just because a company wants to head back to the office doesn't mean it always goes smoothly. Financial giant Goldman Sachs, for example, reopened its New York headquarters in February and mandated its 10,000 employees to return. Only half showed up on the first day. <laughs> you got more power than you think you do. That's because despite the threats of severe consequences, workers do have some leverage right now thanks to the ongoing worker shortage, the great resignation. The U.S. had 11.3 million open jobs available in February, and that number hasn't really wavered in recent months. So rather than spend a lot of time, effort, and money replacing non-compliant employees right now, some employers are letting it ride. But with warnings of a recession ahead, those workers who take their chances now by ignoring return to office mandates may find themselves at the top of the layoff list down the line, if not sooner. Now, this part is true, by the way. The current economy is like it's definitely favoring the workers over the employers. But as soon as it flips, though, we'll be right back to where we were before, where the manager makes you his bitch.